The recent Collector Connection auction just ended and it featured a 400 card T206 slot, a near complete 1933 Gaudi set, a full 1934 Gaudi set, tons of pre-war Hall of Fame baseball cards, and some rare M101 backs. Man, there's a ton to cover. We're going to be taking a look at the top 50 today, as well as a few honorable mentions at the very end. Let's start off with number 50, M101. Uh, Gabby Kravitz. I'm actually not too familiar with them. Let's take a look at baseball reference. And uh, 33 wins above replacement, so not too bad. 1,100 hits, 287 bag average, OPS plus 151. So definitely an above average player. Surprised I didn't know about him. He started at the age of 27, which is pretty late in his career. If he maybe started earlier, he would have had a chance at the Hall. And it looks like he skipped a few years, um, really starting at 31, because he only had, what, 340 play appearances, 277 at bats, and not much in 1909 up until 1912. So for a few seasons, uh, he did pretty well. But regardless, um, it's a scarcer back on this card, which is the reason why it sold for a lot. And I just want to read a little bit over here with only a total of 19 graded by PSA and SG PSA and 36 by SGC. That's among the toughest backs in the M101 sets. So uh, this collector had seven of these raw, which is pretty sweet. And um, those were graded for this auction. And just to show you, there's a website called Old Cardboard. They actually have a document on this. I've referenced it a few times at card shows when I've seen M101s and I wasn't um, too sure how scarce the backs are. And we talk about it a little bit right over here. So if you do want to read that a little bit more, make sure to check out Old Cardboard, a really good reference point for the hobby. So that was our 50th and we're going to go through uh, 49 other cards. Up next, we have a Sanilla Ruth. These are pretty common out of Germany. Still, there's so many out there. Um, so personally, I don't believe spending in a lot of money on this card just because um, maybe in high grades are a little bit tougher to find, but there's so many of these Sanella albums out there. Uh, this one was graded a one. There's paper loss here on the back, which is the reason why I got a one and um, sold for about $450. So a little bit high of a sale price there, at least in my opinion. Next, we have a Jumbo McGinnis from a uh, gold coin Buckner. <sighs> this looks a little overrated at 3.5. And um, I don't really see Buckner sell that often. So let the OC with moderate quarter wear and light toning. Yeah, I, I just don't like the, the color on this one, to be honest with you. But also, I want to say that these are pretty thick cards. So that's why a lot of them um, tend to still be a nicer shape today. All right, Goodwin Champs, Ed Andrews, SGCA trimmed. And uh, great looking card. It's a shame that it was trimmed. I want to say, oh, you can see the trimming right here. Look. Two different types of cuts. And this one sold for uh, $444. Lefty Gomez, 5.5, $474. Very popular Gaudi set and a uh, pretty popular clay player to collect. 1915 at Cracker Jack. Uh, John, I would assume, Niehoff. And I don't know, I'm not, again, a player I'm not too familiar with on this side of things. Minimal staining here on the back. So it's probably issued with the Cracker Jack rather than the full album. Type 1 portrait, Jack Johnson. Same pose over here twice. This is pretty cool. Um, I, I don't know much about type 1s, so. But uh, $500 on this example. Nineteen forty, Ted Williams in a PSA one. It's not a bad looking one. I uh, wonder why. Well, a little bit of staining or paper loss or something like that over here. 
There is some odd damage to the very top and very bottom. Light chipping. Heavy toning, yep. I mean, this might be opportunity to crack this out to the SGC um, based off that Buckner that got a 3.5, to be honest with you. This uh, may get a little bit higher, but uh, $500 for that one. Full 32 Sonella Ruth, or not Sonella Ruth, but the Sonella set. I have actually owned one of these albums before a long time ago, and uh, don't expect to get a high grade on that Ruth. It's going to get a 1.5 or a 2, and that's sold for 500 bucks. Uh, 1933 Dizzy Dean. These have gone on fire. I I can't believe this sold for $500. A few years ago, these were a lot cheaper. But uh, one of the most popular players out there. Very short career and then went into broadcasting. Um, so uh, stats don't look the best. He did have a short run that was really, really good. But that's why he's pretty popular. Tito 6 Christy Matthews. And there's actually two different caps. A uh, black and a white cap. This one's sold for five sixty two. Look how bad that back is. That's a one today. John Titus, SGC five Piedmont back five hundred and ninety two dollars. Old Judge Charlie Ferguson. Old judges have just continued to get a little more popular, and uh, with the small population size, all it takes is a few people to really go after these. $192. Roll more. This is a Briggs Co. E97. Not actually too familiar with a lot of these E97s. I don't see them that often. And um, $600. This one I am familiar with. These were short prints, T206s. Um, that had a Wagner bat. There's also a Cobb out there too. I believe it was. And I don't remember what the Cobb goes for. I've actually seen a few of these at Karchas before. But $600 graded. These actually go from a decent amount of money. And I think this is a pretty awesome uh, bat card. Eugene Packard. This is a uh, 2, 1914. So these were 100% issued Cracker Jacks. Uh, these have the backs like this, where it's 15 to have them flipped over. So even if a label says 14 or 15, always do your due diligence because people mess up. And uh, $621. Got a Christy Matthewson in a one over here and uh, $651. Someone literally took a bite out of that card. Quicker Oats. In. I know it's not technically a baseball card, but it was in the top 50 sales. This was a six, $651 for that Ruth. Another M101 over here. And uh, this is a Tribune. And I know I closed that guide, so make sure to check out that guide uh, to explain how rare this is or not. Uh, but this is Dave Bancroft, a baseball Hall of Famer as well. 680 bucks. Maggio, this one got the one big crease right over there, but not too bad of a looking card. Minus that, seven hundred and thirty nine dollars. Dark cap, Christy Mathewson in a one, way nicer looking than the other one that we saw. Although this cut is pretty bad, but being said, that sold for seven hundred and thirty nine dollars. Cy Young, SGC1, $739 as well. We have some rating, or no, is that a stamp? DT, um, which I believe is his first name and middle name, if I remember correctly. Let me look that up. There we go, look, Denton True Young. So that's what someone stamped on there. It's kind of interesting. And uh, we have another dealer stamp right over there, too. A Hornsby Type 1 photo. 
pretty sweet photo on that one. 1963 passed away, and this one sold for $800. Is there an autograph or something like that on there? Autograph is light but legible. On pen over his lower shoulder in the left. Oh, I didn't even see the autograph. That's why I was like, why did they say deceased in here? I'm like, a lot of type one photos they have. Didn't even see that at first. Sold a quick oats pen, but now uh, we have a premium photo over here, $857 for that Ruth. Give it a one pour. Just in case you don't believe the description, we managed to take a picture of the area of the photo that show the issues. Ah, they're scanned in show. I guess people are saying, what's wrong with this? Look at that. I have to give props to the auction house for that because not all of them would do that. And I shouldn't say not all of them would do that, but not all sellers would do that. Sometimes they try to hide stuff, but uh, super transparent. Cy Young won. This sold for $916. Paper loss, creases. This is a well, well beater copy. <laughs> Pack hole on the toilet. An even worse shape card, this 1933 Gaudi Gehrig, $916. I guess if you want to get a card, right? 1915 at James Meyer or Mayer. Nine hundred forty-six bucks. Babe Ruth photo over here. One thousand dollars to do a portrait. And cut Ruth. No borders on here, so even if you try to cross it, we get an authentic. It works. Joe Tinker, 1914 Cracker Jack, much tougher to find. About $1,100 on this one. Another M101. Uh, back to that first series that we talked about in the beginning of this video. This one sold for eleven fifty two. These uh, cashins aren't the easiest to find. They're not too desirable right now, um, but they do have some bigger players in this set. This uh, Babe Ruth one point five sold for eleven fifty two, and now if you're looking for an entry level Ruth, I would much rather have this than the Gaudi. This is much tougher to find, and it's a lot cheaper. Worldwide Gum, Lou Gehrig. These were actually issued in Canada, uh, Worldwide Gum Company, and you can see printed in Canada. So they kind of think like OPG with baseball cards. And uh, this one sold for $12.41. Gehrig, one of, or 35 Ruth, one of his last cards. And this is back when he was playing, I believe, with the Boston Braves. And that one sold for $1,300. E90 Cy Young. Authentic. I assume this has been trimmed on both of those sides over there. Trimming on the top edge and right edge. Look, there you go. I called it. Uh 1400. Yeah, I believe he has two cards in this E90 set. Walter Johnson in A3. Not gonna lie, pretty generous three, but uh 1536. BVG2, 1934, Gehrig, with the Lou Gehrig says down low. Is that paper lost there too, and a stamp? Come on, BVG, that's not a, that's not a two. Uh, that's that's one five or a one all day long. Chief Bender, and once again, the Tribune. This one sold for eighteen ninety.
High Cobb Red. There's another back stamp over here. And I wonder if some of these back stamps if they have prominent dealers or not. I know, um, God, what's that one collection in the Met? Burdick. Um, Burdick has his own stamp. And you can find those out there, but I'm curious about some of the other ones. Uh, this is BH Rosso. It says, I have no idea. Uh, $2,000 for this in a one. Colgan's Wagner, 2244. Doing your cheap uh, T206 Wagner. Same image. This is uh, the way to go. 33 Ruth with a whole corner taken off, 27. Like I said, get the cash in instead. Um, I like that way better. I'm sorry. This is in terrible shape. Nineteen at thirty three Garrig SGC two thirty one eighty eight. In my own personal opinion, save up to get a nicer copy. Um, you saw the what the ones were doing. This one sold a few thousand more, but if you're already spending that much into a card, if you're putting in your PC, get the better card. Nineteen thirty three Ruth SGC one thirty five. I like this image the best out of the four Gaudi Ruths. Thirty six sixty for card one eighty one and a one. Probably a little bit of a nicer one. I mean, there's a lot of creases, but compared to the other copies that we've seen, one point five on uh, the Sports Kings. I do like the Sports Kings sets because they, or I shouldn't say sets, but the set because it features so many different athletes across different sports. The yellow, or used to be yellow, Ruth on this side of things, $4,000 for one. You know, some bad staining here on the back. 1934 Gaudi complete set, 96 cards in total. With both Garrigs. Wow. So, um, what did the Garrigs look like? This might have been a pretty good deal. Let's see. So, the first one looks like that. All right. Where's the other Garrig at? Is only one of the Garrigs graded? And you see the Dean, the Garringer. I mean, this is a very low grade set, but you have the Greenberg there. Actually, the Greenberg doesn't look too bad. Does this have a chance at a 1 5? This might have been a good buy. I mean, you'd have to price it out, obviously, but where is that other Gehrig? Am I blind? Do they not show the other Gehrig? Thirty-seven and sixty-one. So the one that we see right here is thirty-seven. They put them in order. I mean, I literally might be blind. And oh, there we go. That's why I didn't recognize that, Gary. My God, and Gary has uh, some facial features now. Look at that. That's why it sold for four thousand dollars. I was like, it seems cheap at four thousand, but I mean, if you think about it, even that Greenberg is still a pretty decent card. What did the there was there another thirty four Garrig on here? I'm trying to remember if we just saw thirty threes. Well, the thirty four here sold for eighteen, right? I think that's pretty comparable to the other one. You're looking at eighteen alone. I mean, if the other one you can get eight hundred bucks for. Which still might be a stretch. You're looking at twenty six. Greenberg's at least five hundred dollars. I mean, what does the Greenberg back look like? I mean, that's a clean back. I think it has a shot at a one five. That's skinned over here. What card was skinned? 
The old Terry or the Gehrig? Terry. I was busy with Gehrig there. I mean, between the two Gehrigs and the Greenberg, you might be looking at $3,000. Plus, you have all these other names over here. I mean, the Dean, at least, what, another two fifty, three hundred dollars $300? I don't know if the 34 is compared to 33s. Okay, 33. You'd have to do the math, but uh, this might be a good buy. 39 Ted Williams and a four. I've had coffee. I don't know what's going on down there though. $6,000. 33 Gaudi near uh, complete set. I, I assume missing Ruth and Garrett cards. Yeah, so. And Lajoie. So that's what they split them up. But you have both of the Foxes. The Foxes still do pretty decent. You have Dean in there, Hack Wilson. Let's see. You have Grove. Hack Wilson. So I assume you do have Dean. You just... You do have it in there. I mean, Hall of Fame. I mean, <laughs> some of these are in bad shape, but you can expect anywhere fifty to hundred dollars for each of the Hall of Famers. Even Commons, you can probably sell ten, twenty bucks. I mean, some of these in really bad shape. Maybe you're lucky five bucks. I feel like if you were at a card show, people would buy it. So it's not cheap. I would love to run the numbers on this. And um, the top sale, we have a T206 partial set, 468 different out of 524. This is awesome. This sold for $20,000. Definitely uh, probably going into a dealer inventory lot right before the national. That's some good inventory for you. You got the nap. All right, so like, let's think nap. What's that right now, $500? Walter Johnson like that. I think you could get 1200 at least. You're at 17. What? 400? 300? I think you could get 400 on that. 21. And before someone has a funny comment, look, I'm not pricing all these cards right now. I'm just spitballing on top of my head. So uh, another Lajoie, at least another 300 bucks. Uh, 24. This Joss looks nice. Like 500 or what 27? Uh, those are both trimmed. I mean, I still think you could get 300 at least trimmed on each of these, maybe 400 not. 31, you're at 34. I think this is a pretty good buy. And I have to, I don't know how many different backs there are, right? And I'm not looking at everything. I mean, this type of stuff is going to sell a lot less, especially for these on here. But even commons, you can sell 30, 40, 50 bucks depending on the shape. I mean, if you assume uh, $50 a common, right? And I know there's Hall of Famers in here and things like that. There's 400 commons, right? Do the math. This was a uh, pretty good buy. Really good buy. I mean, you'd have to price out these. You're not getting 50 bucks on this. You're getting like 20 bucks, if that. So... Figure out how many are in like really bad shape. Figure out how many are in decent shape. But the Hall of Famers, you're going to get more than 50 bucks a piece on. Even if they're in that bad shape. You will sell a Hall of Famer more than that. And uh, maybe there's some rare backs. I wonder if they mention if there's any rare backs. You have the Southern Leaguers also. Back breakdown, okay. You have some Old Mill. Those are going to be uh, a little bit more expensive. Some Sovereigns you can probably do a little bit more on. How many Hall of Famers? Those are all the Hall of Famers. I mean, there's some trimmed and skinned, but you have Christy Mathewson in here twice, too. You have the Cy Youngs that we saw, Vic Willis. Both Wajos we saw. Eddie Collins, poor. Yeah, this is this is a really good buy. So congrats to the winner on that. Um, let me see if I can find some honorable mentions really quick. So uh, those were the top 50 and go to some other pages, see if there's something else I can just call out really quick. Early DiMaggio, popular card. 
Gehriga, premium 445 bucks. Look at that, Ted Williams. It's like burned or soaked or something like that. 356 bucks. Jimmy Fox in a one. Doesn't look like a bad one from far away. I'll load that up really quick. And yeah, I'm probably missing some really good stuff, but ah, uh, never mind. The big crease, I couldn't see that over there. Joe DiMaggio press photo for $133. These churchmen are common. This, um, I could have bought some of these sets cheaper. Turfs, uh, this has a Sisler. There's also a Weissmuller, I believe, in there. 36 worldwide gum. Some of these are actually pretty good. Even the commons. Because you don't find them that often. I actually talked about the DiMaggio, my recent one. A lot of 28. Ooh, this was... This has... Uh, oh, it has only Bob Fitzsimmons, the Gans. I mean, even if you're just throwing these on comms, see? And you're buying it for essentially $3 a card. I don't think you go wrong at $3 a card with that. 12 Gaudi, low grade for 86 bucks. <laughs> $7 each. Again, you got to think about numbers like that. Uh, it's not bad. Derringer Hall of Fame, 80 bucks. I know, I know there's 10 pages, but this will be the last one I go through. V100, Bill Donovan. I've sold some of his other cards. He has some collectors out there. Hornsby, 68 bucks. I mean, I think there's some opportunities here. But uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I try to do an auction recap every single week when some of these auctions end. And if I do miss any recaps, let me know on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. And I will catch you guys in another video.